Welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Trevelyan Next. Um, happy pre-Thanksgiving. Looks like we're uh, a week away. So hopefully everybody's uh, year has gone very well so far. Very excited to have uh, two leaders today from FinTech and banking. Uh, we have Kevin Harrington. He is the CEO chairman at Lineage Bank. Um, and we also have Peter, uh, Peter Hazelhurst from Sinterra, co-founder and CEO. So welcome, Peter. Welcome, Kevin. Just wanted to uh, say, Peter, thank you very much for the uh, Tao party at Money 2020. That was fantastic. And cool. also uh, saw your speech there, too, and I watched it yesterday uh, on demand. So uh, that was a fantastic event. But uh, glad to bring you both together. I think this is a very relevant uh, conversation we're going to have today around community banking, uh, fintech as a service, banking as a service. Um, but Kevin, I wanted to start with you. Uh, you know, at Lineage and then coming from your background in banking uh, with your father, I just wanted to get a, you know, a feel for your background and kind of how Lineage came about in the last few years. Yeah, and thanks, and it, it, it's it's great to be here. So I'll. I'll a quick recap, I'll start with the bank prior to Lineage Bank. Uh, my father and I and a handful of other people founded Franklin Synergy Bank, which de novoed in 2007. Uh, and my father and I left that bank together in 2019. Uh, shortly thereafter, it sold to uh, another regional bank, uh, uh, First Bank. Some points of interest about Synergy and what we were able to pull there. We went from zero to over four billion in assets in about 12 years. Uh, and then we also were ended up um, publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, and you know, if you take a look at it from a shareholder perspective, and however kind of you want to measure what kind of returns we had on that uh, organization, it, it was it was very strong. Uh, so that was that was a good time, um, and we're, we're we're glad that's uh, part of what we were able to accomplish. Uh, we've had quite a bit of success banking here in the Middle Tennessee area, specifically uh, Williamson County and the surrounding areas which is just south of Nashville, which county itself is the seventh richest county in the nation as measured per capita. So anyways, my, my father and I decided we weren't done. So we tried to figure out uh, what we wanted to do. So on, on January 1st, beginning of this year, uh, we completed uh, an acquisition of what is really a strategic charter acquisition. Uh, we acquired what was the smallest bank in the state of Tennessee uh, and moved the charter and renamed the bank to uh, Williams County. We still have a presence uh, where it came from, and that was uh, in Atwood, Tennessee, which is close to Jackson, for those of you that are looking at the map of West Tennessee. We had a lot of things we had to do. The bank really had no technology to speak of. Um, so we implemented a very fast core conversion on some systems that we were um, we were interested in, uh, or I'm sorry, we've had some experience with, and that was, that was a good time. Uh, it was tough, uh, it was probably the fastest systems conversion uh, you know, I've ever seen go through, but we're able to do that and open our presence and, um, you know, in downtown Franklin, which is part of Williams County. Um, and we've since then basically tripled everything, asset, loan, deposit, portfolio in the bank. Um, this is a fast growing market. And historically, we've had some very uh, aggressive growth patterns. So we're just, we're excited. We're, we're back at it. And this, this again, has the most wonderful, uh, potential and what we're going to take this bank to the, to the next level. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, great background, uh, you know, coming from that community bank, uh, Tennessee uh, area, uh, and then moving into what initial thoughts did you have around uh, fintech as a service, banking as a service, and uh, what uh, partners out there did you look at kind of during that process over the past uh, 11 months. With, with Lineage Bank and other banks that we, we've been a part of, we've always had a, a tech, very technology biased uh, culture. I remember at, in a previous life, we were excited to be one of the first in the market with a uh, mobile deposit, uh, scanning every check. Now that's commonplace, you know, uh, but that, that, was a, that just kind of goes to show some of our culture that we've had that, uh, you know, building technology uh, one of the most exciting things about Lineage Bank is the, the technology team that we have in place today is probably, it is by far the strongest uh, we've ever had in our um, previous banks. So that's, that's exciting. Um, you know, as we continue to look at technology and evaluate other things that are going on quickly, banking as a service, 
uh, became incredibly attractive. One of the, um, the great things about Middle Tennessee uh, and not necessarily the rest of the country is there's inc still an incredibly high loan demand here. And of course, we're recruiting as a basically a startup bank. We're recruiting lenders and bankers from other organizations. So we're actively moving uh, books of business. And that, that is definitely fueling our, our high growth of rate, especially when it comes to the loan portfolio. Uh, one of the challenges in this market has always been funding that loan growth. Uh, so we, we view banking as a service, as a very strong tactic, strategy, what have you, to help fund that loan growth. Uh, and, and as it stands today, the, the regulators uh, view the, the, those deposits to core, which is, uh, which is quite important. So as we got started, as we started implementing our technology, you know, we looked around at the, uh, the marketplace to see uh, uh, who was out there and what options we, we had. And it became very clear, uh, and, and we have follow-up questions or discussion about that, that Sinkterra was the, the forerunner, and I definitely say that the first and top one is they just have a solid leadership team that's led by Peter, and we're so excited to be able to work with them. Yeah, and that was kind of uh, you know leading into when you were evaluating who to partner with um, for banking as a service, fintech as a service, uh, and then uh, you know speaking with Peter and then choosing Sinkterra. Uh, what was kind of that? you know, moment of, wow, this is going to be fantastic. We got a partner with Peter. It's, it's going to be great. Did you have, uh, was it the leadership team, the technology, kind of their vision for the company? Uh, was there something that kind of set them apart? Oh, I mean, I would say- For the record, uh, if, if any of it was fantastic, I'll say, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> but it could just be okay or great, but yeah. fantastic. Would be so, awesome. you know, very early on when we were uh, still uh, putting everything together to get where we are today, but we still have lots to build. We had a very uh, early conversation with Peter uh, and that was, I can't remember the exact month earlier this year. And it was clear that the, the chemistry was there and very exciting uh, and as knowledge and experience just said, Hey, this is, this is the place to go. You know, there's, there's plenty of other kind of supporting facts, but it's really, it was really uh, about, Hey man, this guy knows what he's doing. We need to align ourselves with him. Yeah, that's great. And then uh, Peter, kind of moving over to uh, Sinterra, uh, their side, uh, maybe just like a brief overview of Sinterra's products and how they can help community banks uh, such as Kevin's and other community banks out there uh, and kind of uh, also from the fintech side, you know, helping fintechs kind of find that uh, banking partner, which can be very, very critical. Um, to the success of the fintech. Yeah, so look, what we do at Sinterra is um, focus on both sides of this uh, partnership that need to work together. On the fintech side of the world, the challenge is there's so many different things you have to integrate and build and code and stuff like that. When you're getting started, the what you want to try and find is a partner to work with like us that has a one-stop shop of everything you need to build your near bank or whatever it is you're trying to focus in on as a community, or if you build a wallet or if you're building something for crypto and so forth. And our challenge for, for all of these folks is how do we make it as fast as possible go to market and to test and experiment and to try um, so that you get some sort of signal that you can then go get funded or raise money and so on. The problem in general for the fintechs is most of the banks that are in the market are sold out. And as a result, the banks are saying, hey, we're gonna be really, really picky and expect all the fintechs to be really well funded before we say yes to any particular one of them. So, and then the fintech says, well, that's great. I'm gonna go try and get funded. And the investors say, hey, do you have a bank yet? And so the fintech mm -hmm. is like stuck in this doom loop of like, they need a bank, bank won't bank them if they're not invested. The investors won't invest in them if they don't have a bank. And so we sit in the middle of this uh, in a couple of interesting ways. One is we're wor working with great banks like Kevin and Lineage to bring on more banks into the ecosystem uh, to just fundamentally create more supply. And to do that and to be successful, we have to represent to the banks like Kevin's that we can help them manage and operate a, a successful new line of business, the FinTech part of the bank. And to do that, there's a number of things that are required. One is we need to help on the most basic stuff of what's the compliance regime? How do I think about managing and operating and, and monitoring the fintech for good behavior? So that's like step zero. 
Mm -hmm. Step one after that is, okay, now that it's up and running, how do I think about billing and charging and fees and keeping track of where the money is and reconciliation and so forth? That's the second part. And then if you can get all of that going, uh, then you start to focus on operational efficiency. And so we've been working with Lineage for, for a few months now, which has been really good. And they've been a great partner because we've been almost co-developing some of these learnings on how the bank should go to market, um, basic stuff like getting membership in MasterCards as a principal member, all those sorts of things. And what we're discovering is now we're at this place where um, we have an opportunity to see how many fintechs will Kevin and his bank take on? Mm -hmm. And it's not 100. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's 12 to 20 next year. And it's going to depend on how repeatable is the process, how successful is each fintech. Some won't work out, and that's probably okay too. Mm -hmm. uh, some are going to get funded, some are not. And we want to try and experiment both in bringing new ideas to the market to see what is attractive and interesting to consumers or small businesses, while also keeping the bank safe and sound on the back end side. I think one of the things that has helped us a lot in our approach is because we don't um, directly connect into Kevin's core banking system, we don't, into, we don't have a big long engagement with us and FIS or Fiserv to mm -hmm. just start the relationship first. What we're really focused in on now is what's the business model? What's the opportunity? How do you price? How much should Kevin and his bank charge for each of the services that we give him to offer? And then scaling it up. And so it's, it's really fun. We're right at the beginning. I think our first client is going live in three weeks time, four weeks time. It's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Within 30 days, it's crazy. So excited. Wow. And, and then, you know, I'm hoping we do one a month from thereafter. We'll see how it goes. And wow. um, so we're right at that, the, the tipping point, which is really fun. So that's an interesting uh, point there, Kevin. So Singtera helps you kind of with the FinTech partnerships. Now, Peter, now do you help kind of facilitate the FinTechs and tell Kevin these might be good partners here uh, and then introduce them and see if it's a good connection? Um, so that's how it works. That's, a, yeah, that's exactly right. So we, we sit in the middle helping the FinTechs build and then figuring out who's going to be the right bank for them to partner with. And at the gotcha. same time, Kevin has to tell us how much risk and what sorts of businesses does he want to support? Because gotcha. we've got contacts already coming to us for crypto, for remittances, for cannabis. Mm -hmm. And not all of those things will be appropriate to Kevin's bank. Um, gotcha. And so our job is to mix and match and find the right things. And then as Kevin uh, wants to expand his actual banking business on the lending side, Mm -hmm. more deposit volume will actually be really interesting for Kevin. Some banks we talk to say, we don't want any deposit volume. We're, we're sold out on deposits. We want both. Mm -hmm. yep. and so there's different use cases that come along and, and our job is to sit in the middle and help facilitate That's that great. initial partnership. That's great. So once the Singtera technology is up and going at the, the bank, uh, Kevin, I guess then it really is picking and choosing the right partnerships for your risk appetite, what you're looking for, uh, for lineage. Yeah. So I would say, you know, as far as our appetite for this, we're, we're, we're hungry. And I, I did take a, a second, a second ago when he said, we're going to get 20 next year. I wrote that down and we'll circle back in six, <laughs> nine months with Peter to make sure we are on that. Uh, yeah. And, and I think it's, we're more taking it from a standpoint of crawl, walk, run, right? So the first mm -hmm. uh, uh, neobank fintech that we're looking at is starting out with a um, uh, culture of being healthy and being wealthy uh, that begins with uh, FBO savings accounts. Um, and, and so for us, that's kind of a low risk standpoint. It allows us to understand how the system works and how we can, you know, manage it going forward. But, you know, we, we expect our risk appetite to uh, continue to grow. Uh, you know, there, there's a few things that we will, uh, we will definitely have to stay away from as, as long as a uh, cannabis is illegal in the state of Tennessee. That's a big no, no for us. Um, we're not saying no to international remittance forever, but that's a little bit more of an infrastructure that we have to uh, be ready to have. Uh, we're most definitely interested in some um, uh, ones that have crypto flares. Uh, you know, for instance, we very excited about me uh, an on-ramp onto uh, the various stable coins that are out there. So there's quite a bit of, um, you know, 
quite a bit of growth we, we expect with this relationship. I want to echo something that Peter mentioned earlier. You know, most, most bankers uh, that have uh, knowledge of how these uh, core processors work, you know, can't, it's hard to wrap your mind around when it comes to how do you integrate a third party basically having accounts on your system uh, mm -hmm. and working with these core processors. They're very hard to get to the back, the back end and some of that is done um, purposeful on, on their standpoint. But the solution that uh, Peter and Sinterra uh, provide, and not only is it simple, uh, it's a straightforward process, it's very robust and allows us to have quite a, you know, tra full, full transparent, transparency and the reporting requirements that we need. And again, I, one of the things we're super excited about, the, uh, the approval just came down a few days ago about uh, becoming a MasterCard principal partnership. That's huge, very, a little that's unheard big. of for a small bank our size. So, you know, that's it's great, the relationship and the almost, you know, walking hand in hand with uh, Sinterra and down this road is, is, is just, it's invaluable. Yeah, no, that's great. And Peter, like uh, a lot of our audience, um, we have a deep network at Trevelyan of you know, community banks, smaller community banks. Uh, are there any impediments if I'm a small community bank from a technology perspective, from a talent perspective uh, with working with Sinterra? Or do you, um, you kind of iron that out with your technology and your relationships? Is there any kind of impediments at the beginning? So I think, the good news is, I think the good news for almost every community bank we could talk to, and also the big banks, so we're talking to the big banks mm -hmm. as well, is because our tech stack is freestanding, there's almost no, there's, there's basically nothing that's required on the technology side. I remember, okay. Kevin, I think you were on the call with uh, FIS or Pfizer, I can't remember who, and they were like, all right, we're going we're gonna to have a project meeting to talk about the project meetings. And, and I was yeah, like, they do that. I was like, I was like, what's this about? And he's like, well, we we know it's going to be this big long project, so we want to plan ahead. And and I'm like, well, there's nothing to do. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, we need the location of your uh, ACH file drop off and pick up, and that's it. And the and the project manager was like, that's it. <laughs> and and I I still think Kevin, you probably got a bill for that meeting, which is probably unfortunate. <laughs> but but it was it, I think it, it, it shocked them that you can uh, go to market so cleanly without a whole bunch of effort. And, and that's been a real focus for us. Over time, there'll be more connection points at the bank for things like MasterCard principal membership um, if banks want to do acquiring. So there'll be a, a further step up where um, the bank will actually be able to initiate transactions onto the wire uh, with Visa or MasterCard. That'll be an interesting step up. But those are a little bit opt-in. You don't have to do that. We can wrap the transaction somewhere else. At some point, we'll also offer direct connection to the Fed with real time and for wires. And that again will be an opt-in by the community bank if they want to do that. That's great. So there's no uh, well, I have you know an old core system or you know, I'm kind of hamstrung. There's there's no excuse from the technology standpoint for any community bank or larger bank. Um, yeah, if to have if the I can uh, yeah, get a little response to that. So, you know, we're talking about uh, the impediment, impediments for uh, the, the community bank to get involved. You know, Sinterra 100% has removed the technology obstacle. It's, it's, it's not there. Well, what's the other one? Well, making a service with the other kind of radar, it's going to go off and everyone, what is, how about BSA, KYC programs, the regulatory burden? Uh, you know, one thing I think is uh, very revealing on, uh, on CTERRA's dedication to this and also to uh, regulatory compliance is just the, uh, the number of, co of compliance and former examiners, senior auditors that are coming to work um, for CTERRA. And that, that definitely helps uh, approach this with a, a, a lot of confidence in, in the market. Yeah. Um, you know, you, 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 you still have to have a BSA officer at a bank. There's no question about it. Uh, will you have to add um, some staff to support banking as a service from a compliance BSA? Probably. Uh, it depends on how, uh, how many you want to add and what your risk level is. Um, but, the, you know, what you're getting in return, if you look simply as the ROI on that, that's, you know, that's well worth it. Uh, and so, you know, it's just, uh, you know, they, they're just doing a phenomenal job of removing 
the obstacles of which technology or compliance or anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was my kind of. I think, kinda, I think oh, sorry, still, no, I think it's still early days for us, though. So um, we're we're humble enough to realize that there's lots of things we can do to improve. And so as we bring on more fintechs and more banks, I'm sure we're going to learn better ways to do things more operationally efficient and and those sorts of things. Um, and so at the beginning, we think it's one or two folks in the compliance function and an accounting type of person mm -hmm. plus a business owner are the sort of three to five people you want to have at the start. And then if you are being an aggressive bank and you want lots of programs, there'll be some sort of scaling of those, those resources based on the velocity of the consumers. Our job is to make it non-linear scaling. So it's not like every 10,000 people you add one person, it's going to be sort of a, a movement like this. And, mm -hmm. um, and proof will be in the pudding. And I encourage all everyone on the ecosystem to just push us on, hey, if you just fix this one technology step, life would be easier because tech will always trump people if we can make it work right. Yeah. And that was kind of what I wanted to get into a little bit, Peter, was, uh, you know, the talent perspective since at Trevelyan, that's, that's what we do. And, you know, we work with, you know, uh, Eric Sprank up at Coastal. We work with uh, Eric Scovegard at, at Lincoln Savings Bank. And as those programs continue to build, you know, building the team out, making sure you have the right team in place, it's almost another division at the bank. It's a vast yeah. division, completely focused. Um, so like uh, Kevin said, you know, you crawl before you walk and then run. Um, yes, I think, you know, having somebody in there who has that relationship with Sinterra, right, who is kind of that communication point with Sinterra is very important, I would think, from a, a bank side. I'm not sure, if yeah. Kevin, if it's directly with you or if you have somebody uh, on your team who works directly with Sinterra for all the uh, issues and upgrades yeah we, we have uh, uh we have we have a couple of people that are the primary to deal with uh seek terror to get the projects moved forward that's not their only job you know do we where we are today do we have a vast division no um you know you know our appetite right now when we are it, it makes it that it, it we don't need that however i would say uh, i can't wait until we do need that and we're we scale up as we go because that's yeah. just going to mean quite a bit of success so uh, you know, for those banks that are looking to start and, you know, they're, they're feared about that, you know, how much do I have to pay up front to get this going and how long will I start uh, making money back in my investment? The way St. Terror is built, it has a very uh, low entry point of cost. And it, it's not, I mean, yes, you'll, some of your staff will spend time on these, these projects and the compliance, but it's not all encompassing in the beginning. Uh, now, as you grow, uh, and as we expect we'll grow, we, we will have that. Uh, but that's a phenomenal problem to have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great problem to have. Um, no, this has been a great chat. And uh, just wanted to end with, so Peter, from your perspective, uh, what's that first step for a bank CEO, a chairman of the board, um, as we head into the holiday season and 2022 is gonna be here before you know it, um, is it to have a conversation uh, with, somebody from Sinterra uh, with your team, just to you know, get that kind of overview of your products and how you can help. Uh, just that first initial step. Sometimes the first step is the hardest, it usually is. Uh, yeah. So Look, yeah, um, would that be your I'm advice? An I, I'm an open book, p at sinterra.com. Just email uh, me, we'd love to fantastic. set up a, a chat and hopefully align with you on an interest of what's gonna take to make your bank successful. Um, and or it's possible we'll say, actually, you're not the right fit for us. You're not ready yet or whatever. Yeah. We want to be very transparent about what makes um, a good participant in the ecosystem. And, um, and so having an openness to doing that and wanting as a bank to grow non-traditionally. So yeah. if you think as a bank, your, your growth is buy a branch next door, buy a branch next door, expand, expand, expand. We're probably not the right answer. If your yeah. idea is, hey, I want to do non-linear growth and still grow by branch, if, if that's appropriate, then we're going to be someone you want to talk to. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, and having that first you know, chat to you know, see if a strategy is there to continue is, is essential. And uh, no, Kevin, very excited uh, for the journey of lineage. Uh, very excited 
Peter, for Sintera, thank you so much for your time today and uh, have a, a great holiday season with your families. And uh, hopefully we'll have another chat in 2022. And Kevin, you'll be up to 15 FinTech partners by uh, next June, probably. And uh, we'll yep, see how yep. you're doing. I got, you. I got everybody quoted on that. We'll yeah. circle back to yeah. make sure it happens. Yeah, Love it. that's great. Thanks, fellas. Have a great All day. Right. It was Love a pleasure. Thank you. you.